also today, I'm going to tell you about eight places to hike and one place to kayak around Page, Arizona. So before I get started, just need to say this is a lot of information to cover. So I'm not going to go too in depth in any of the individual hikes, but I do have videos dedicated to a lot of them. I'll put links down in the description. If you see something you like, go down there, check it out. You'll get a lot more information. That said, let's get started. First off, Scribe page a little bit. It's a city in northern Arizona, and it's best known for Lake Powell. Now, Lake Powell is created in Glen Canyon. They made the Glen Canyon Dam. It's an amazing lake if you're into kayaking, jet skiing, houseboat parties, cliff diving, pretty much any type of lake activity. Lake Powell is enormous. It's amazing. But this is a hiking channel, so I'm not going to go in depth in, about Lake Powell. It's definitely worth checking out, though. So one of the main features in Page is the Glen Canyon Dam, and you actually pass on a bridge. Glen Canyon Dam's on one side. The Colorado River in this beautiful canyon is on the other. Now, if you go down this canyon, there is an area called Lee's Ferry. Lee's Ferry is a boat launch. It's best known for the area where they launch uh, river rafting tours for the Grand Canyon, but... There are some cool hikes down there. Lee's Ferry is a fee area. I'm not going to get into the fees and the permits and everything. Those change all the time. So I could make this video and then tomorrow it would change. But there's a kiosk down there. You pull over, you pay your money, whatever the fee is, and then you can go in and, and use the area. Right at Lee's Ferry, if you go a little bit past the boat launch, there is this trail called Spencer Trail. So Spencer Trail is a pretty aggressive hike. It goes from Lee's Ferry down at the elevation of the river, all the way up to the top of Marble Canyon, Glen Canyon, gives this overlook. You can see all the way to Page, down to the Grand Canyon from this overlook. It's amazing. The trail itself, it's a little exposed. If you're afraid of heights, you, you might want to think twice about it. It is like 4.27 miles, I think, round trip, and 1,600 feet of elevation gain, and then lost going back down. So it's, it's tough. It'll get your thighs burning. It'll get your heart pumping, but it's worth it for the views. Now, slightly down the road in the downstream direction is another trail called Cathedral Wash. Cathedral Wash is the exact opposite of Spencer Trail. It goes down instead of up. It is this slot canyon, box canyon hybrid. It's very unique in the rock formations and just it, its appearance. One of the things I really like about Cathedral Wash is it has a lot of obstacles. If you've been in slot canyons, you know that you come to things like dry falls, boulder falls, uh, you know, all these obstacles that you have to figure out a way around. Now, that often involves helmets, harness, repelling gear, but not at Cathedral Wash. They're all non-technical. It's a great beginning thing for if you want to kind of get into scrambling, but you don't want anything too extreme. So you can do this, no gear, you get done and it just feels like you've accomplished something a little more badass than a normal hike. Now eventually you get down to the bottom, you're right at the Colorado River. Really cool. I, I believe it's uh, 4.6 miles total out and back, around 465 feet of elevation loss and then gain coming out. That's according to our GPS when, my, when Tina and I did it. You can actually combine these. When we went, we combined Spencer Trail and Cathedral Wash both in the same day. No permits. Pay your day use. Park, go, hike, and enjoy. Now, I know I said that I'm a hiking channel, but I can't talk about Lee's Ferry without talking about the Glen Canyon Dam backhaul. I don't kayak very often, but the most kayaking I've ever done was in this canyon. We rented a boat. They took us and our kayaks upstream 17 miles to Glen Canyon Dam from Lee's Ferry, let us go, and then we went downstream all the way back. You can camp down there, saw a ton of people fishing, just a really, really cool area. Definitely worth checking out if you're down there. One of the highlights is you get to see Horseshoe Bend from the river. It's probably a good transition, actually, to talk about Horseshoe Bend. So if you're not familiar with Horseshoe Bend, you've probably seen this picture. That is Horseshoe Bend. About five miles south of Page on the I-89, there is a parking lot and a pull-off where you can go to Horseshoe Bend. It's recently been redone. It's very popular. You'll see tour buses down there. Now they have pay kiosks when you go in. You drive through like a bunch of toll booths. You pay your money. 
you go into the gravel lot, any car will make it there. It's it, right off the highway. And then you hike. Now, the hike to Horseshoe Bend is about a mile, mile and a half. can't remember if that's total or one way, but there's not much to it. But don't let that deceive you. It's still full sun exposure. It's still the desert. And, you know, a mile, mile and a half, that's still a long way to, to walk. So if you go out there, have the appropriate footwear, realize that it's going to be hot, sun protection, and bring plenty of water. Anyway, you walk down there, the video will show the trail conditions, very straightforward, no way you're going to get lost. You come down, they have an overlook that they have now put a fence around. Tragically, some people have fallen off here in the past and lost their lives, so they put this railing up. I did see people off to the side of the railing, still trying to get pictures on the rocks. If you're going to do that, just be really careful. I'm not crazy about putting up fences in the wilderness. But the only thing that would be more tragic than that is if they put up the fence in the wilderness and then people walk around the fence and, and still die. So be careful. I can't remember if it's just south or just north of Horseshoe Bend, but on the I-89, you will cross this bridge and there will be a sign that says water holes. So for water holes Canyon, there's a pull off right off the interstate park. You walk down into the canyon. If you go downstream under the bridge, under the highway, it quickly becomes this technical canyon that ultimately ends in a 300-foot rappel down into Marble Canyon where I was talking about kayaking and you have to get uh, a boat or whatever to get back to Lee's Ferry to get out. I'm not talking about stuff like that in, in this video. I'm assuming you would want to go upstream, which is a non-technical slot canyon that's very pretty, very straightforward as you can see in the video. Now, Waterholes is on the Navajo Nation. So when we went, you had to get permits through Navajo Nation. Now I believe you have to have a guide. It's been closed because of COVID, but um, I think you actually have to have a guided tour, which, you know, if you don't like those, it's a minus. But I also heard when we went that there are areas further upstream beyond where we were able to go that um, the guides may be able to take you that are also very pretty and picturesque that... Uh, you know, we weren't allowed to go when we went there. So maybe the guide's a good thing with that. Now, I don't have any video of this, but I can't talk about stuff around Page without talking about Antelope Canyon. It is probably the most famous slot canyon in the world, and that's because it is very photogenic. Photographers come from all over to take pictures of it. Tina and I went there once. We were looking for permits for water holes. We were going to water holes because it is not as crowded as Antelope Canyon. And we ended up going to the Antelope Canyon Trailhead to see if they would sell us permits for water holes. There was a line of people, a couple of booths. You go to the front of the booth, you pay for your tour in Antelope Canyon, and then they shuttle you over to a Jeep, load up the Jeep, drive the Jeep out. The whole time we're standing in line, we're watching Jeeps full of people coming in, going out, coming in, going out, nonstop stream of these Jeeps. My friend who went said it was hard to get a picture because people were bumping into him, stepping in front of him. They'd hit his tripod. We'll probably go there one day to do a video on it. I hate to talk good or bad about it without being there. But that, that kind of being on rails type of tour is not my thing when I think about the outdoors. So that's why I haven't done it. But um, lots of people love it. So I don't want to talk badly about it. If it's on your list, go check it out. Like I said... It is beautiful. Side note, you can kayak into the bottom downstream portion of Antelope Canyon from Lake Powell. It's another option. I think it's less people. Still pretty popular, but um, another option there. Now, if you go on the I-89 about 29 miles north, northwest of Page, you pass into Utah, and one of the first things you see, see so gravel lot, people parked on the north side of I-89. And it's the Toadstools Trailhead. Toadstools is a very short hike. It's about a mile each way. Full sun exposure, no water, no real elevation gain. It's hard to get lost. Very straightforward. Again, have the appropriate gear. Watch out for the sun. It gets very hot. Bring water. But at the end of it, it has these hoodoos that are... The one is very famous in Utah. I see it used to advertise Utah a lot. But there are a few around there. Kind of a family-friendly, quick and easy pull-off and, and hike. It's worth the walk. And I'll tell you a secret. If you're walking in and you're just about at the hoodoo that everyone goes there to see, if you look beyond it, there is a cliff face. 
if you look a little bit to the left of that hoodoo, you're facing it and walking towards it. If you went past it to the left, to that cliff face, there are these alcoves. And if you have seen pictures that look like this on Instagram, that's where they took those pictures, in that alcove, slightly to the left, past that hoodoo, up in the cliff face. There's a few of them there. You might have to try a couple of them out to see which one the right one is, but it's pretty easy. You'll find it. Forgot to mention, no permits, no fees, nothing. Pull off the road, park if there's a spot, and go. That's all there is to it. Get into the stuff I really like. So if you continue on the I-89 away from Page, past Toad's Duels, about four miles, the road will take a sharp right, but you can turn hairpin left onto House Rock Road. If you go down that, five, ten miles, you will come to the Wire Pass Trailhead. Now, the Wire Pass Trailhead is one of my favorite places on the planet because it leads to my favorite day hike and one of my favorite backpacking trips. Let's start with the day hike, and that's the wave. So you can't talk about the wave without talking about wave permits. They are really hard to get. I have video about how we got them the first time. They have since changed everything, so I have a 2021 update on the permits. I'm not going to get into it here because it's got two videos, probably 20, 30 minutes worth of information between them. But I will say permits are required. Permits are very hard to get. So look into that if you're interested, but... You should be interested because the wave looks like this. Now, another tip, I have a video about the wave hike. Most people go, there's this spot that everybody gets their picture taken. It is the wave. It's amazing. But there are so many other things to see there. There is Top Rock Arch. There's the alcove. There's the second wave. There's a place that we found by accident the second time we went that I'm going to call the third wave. I've never heard of it before. And there's Melody Arch, which is one of my favorites. Now, those are the places that we've been, and there's even more to see. There's Big Mac, there's Boneyard, there's Dinosaur Tracks. There's a ton to see, and if you go through the trouble of getting the permits for the wave, get all the bang for your buck that you can. See everything. It's amazing. I have a lot of people, like I think I've kind of said with Antelope Canyon and uh, Horseshoe Bend, I'm not big on the go to a place for a photo op. I know people say that about the wave sometimes. I don't think those people have been to the wave. I thought that at the beginning, been there. No, it's amazing. Anyway, you start at the Wire Pass Trailhead, you get in this wash, you branch off, you go to the wave. If you stay in the wash, you come to Wire Pass. Wire Pass is this very short but really amazing slot canyon and then that quickly meets Buckskin Gulch. Buckskin Gulch is reportedly the longest and deepest slot canyon in the world. It will ruin all other slot canyons for you. Been there several times. We usually backpack it. You need permits for that. I have a video about the permits and how to get those and the hike and what to expect. Just know that Buckskin Gulch looks like what you're seeing in this video. It goes on for I don't know if it's 14, 15, 16 miles. Our GPS never works down there, and there's conflicting information on how long it is. But it's just mind-blowing at every turn, and it goes on forever. Now, you can backpack it. You can day hike it. You can access it from the White House Trailhead, Wire Pass Trailhead, Buckskin Trailhead, or you can walk all the way down Buckskin turn and go downstream in the Perea, walk another, I think it's like 44-ish miles long total, and it comes out at uh, Lee's Ferry. Buckskin Gulch, one of my favorite backpacking trips. Check that one out. Last area is White Pocket. White Pocket needs no permits, but uh, the roads keep the crowds down. The roads are deep sand. They say high clearance four-wheel drive. They mean it. Every time we've gone, somebody's stuck, cars are abandoned, um, people get in trouble down there all the time. When we go, we bring sandboards, shovel, air compressor, you know, all sorts of stuff to get you through this sand. But when you get there, it looks like this. It's just this rock formation in the middle of nowhere. You just get on there, walk around, take pictures, and uh, just walk around in amazement the whole time. So it's crazy to think all these things are in such a concentrated area. Page, Arizona, one of my favorite places. We go there all the time. I haven't even scratched the surface with this video. There are tons more things to see there. So if you like what you saw in the video, 
What are you waiting for? Lame trip. Enjoy. Love voiceovers. And I'm going to do... Uh, <clears throat> So before I so before I get started, I hate this. Now, Glenn can't. It's not this. No. Called Cthulhu. You pull off to the side of the highway. If you go down, <clears throat> you pull off to the. There's a pull-off just to the right. So if water holes can't... Ugh. If you look a little bit to the left of that hoodoo... Oh, behind that...